Oh, you can't exactly. Yeah, that's... Good. Okay, so let's talk about Beacon. Beacon is a CMS for Phoenix Live View. And uh, first question for you guys, um, who has ever used a CMS before or know what CMS is? Okay, so, okay, that's good. Almost everyone. Um, Beacon is a new CMS for, uh, for Live View. And Beacon is a R&D project by Dockyard and who does know Dockyard? Dockyard provides services for Elixir and we have been investing into R&D projects like Live View Native, um, Dockyard Academy and also, also Beacon. And when we talk about CMS, usually the first question is why? Why another CMS? We have so many options in the market, so why another one? And one of the main reasons is to keep using Elite. So if you have your company, your team is running a Phoenix or Live View project, you most likely need a website or a landing page or a marketing site or something like that. And so why not keep using Elixir, the same stack, the same infrastructure, the same team, the same knowledge. And then Mike Beans created first prototype for our beacon. And then I joined Dockyard to work full time on, on Beacon. And nowadays I'm leading this, this project. And my name is Leandro. You can find me on GitHub and Twitter. And I have been working with Elixir and Live View since the very, very early days. And I have done some contributions to some projects like Elixir, Phoenix, Live View, Acto, and some other projects. So I, I really believe into open, open source. And Beacon is an open source project and all the projects around Beacon are open source and they continue to be open source. So in March of this year, uh, we released a new Dockyard website. It's running on Beacon, 100% on Beacon. We are using it every day. Even though Beacon does not have a stable release yet, we do not have a virtual one release, not yet, but we are using it every day. And if you don't know the Dockyard website, uh, let me show how it looks like and especially how it feels like. So we have the home page, uh, and as you can see, we can navigate through the pages, and this navigation it, it feels instantaneous. It's really, really fast, and that's really important because for SEO, it's the most important feature for SEO is to present the content of your page as quick as possible. So that's one of the reasons for using Live View. For, uh, for this, this project. So that's the experience we want to deliver uh, with Beacon. So, so in order to understand how Beacon works, we need to understand how Live View Render works. And here we have a very simple Live View, just a render function saying Elixir, Elixir Conf. And as you can see, I'm reusing the same slides. And it's gonna display the, this page as you can expect. But the most important uh, feature here, factor here is the render callback for a live view. It is expecting a render struct. So the HCGU that we have over there, it is basically building a this struct for us, the render struct. It does have the static data and also the dynamic data for the for your page for your template, and return these structs is going to render the very same page. So you could essentially write these structs manually in order to render the live view pages. But of course, you don't need to. So keep this in mind. This struct in mind is is important. So in Beacon, we have, um, well, I don't know if you can see, but we have um, live admin, Beacon live admin project. 
it's a I, it's a admin interface to create pages, layouts, components, other resources for your site. And these admin interface it runs in a cluster, so you can have multiple sites running in multiple nodes. And the admin interface will find all the sites in the cluster, so you can manage all the sites together. And you have a multiple editor. It's based on the Lifebook editor. Uh, so big thank you to the Lifebook team. So you can write your templates using this editor. So let's see. Um, let's say you are creating some pages um, in this live uh, admin editor. And the question is how we can get the template from the database, the storing the database, and actually render the pages. And in Beacon, we have two processes. We have the loading process and the rendering process to render the pages. So let's say you are creating some pages, like a home page using a Higgs template or a services page using a marked out template. Beacon supports both by default, or even a path with dynamic segments. In Beacon, for each one of those pages that you create in the admin interface, Beacon will build a module that we call a page module. So Beacon is going to build this page module with a render function that is going to compile the template for you using the live view HTML engine. So Beacon build this module dynamically at runtime, compile and load this module at runtime. And it compiles and loads one for each page. So they have a unit name. And the next step is after compiling and load those modules, the next step is uh, storing some metadata for each page into a ads table. That is, um, that's a router table, actually. So we have the path as key and the metadata. Uh, we have some information like the page module name. So the loading process is done. We got a template from the database, compiled and load a page module for each page and loaded this router table. Now, suppose we are visiting these blog posts um, and since Beacon is a library that runs in your Phoenix application, you are supposed to call this Beacon site macro in your application router, which essentially is a catch all route to a page live, live view inside of Beacon. It works like a prox. So every request goes through this, this live view. And in this live view, we have a render function where the first step is finding the page module for the request. So let's say we have a request for that blog post, then we get the request path, and then we try to pattern match each one of the paths that we have in the router table. <laughs> and not only the path, but also the dynamic segments of that path until we find a uh, match. So this works pretty much uh, like Phoenix router, but instead of having a compiled router module, we have a X table. That's why I call these a router table, because in Beacon, we need to add and remove pages at runtime. So we need something that is, is easily, uh, we can replace the pages easily. So the next step is calling the render function of the page module that we have loaded in memory, passing the assigns for that page, which is gonna, sorry, which is gonna return the render struct for us, which as we know, is gonna display the page. So that's how we can display pages really fast because we keep everything in memory and we can, provide assigns, dynamic data to those pages. And this design, it seems simple, but we actually had to go through different designs. And the first, the first design we used, we had before, we had a single module 
with a render function for each page, which is is a good solution um, because we can just pattern match the request path. We don't need a router table. The problem was the .NET website has more than 700 pages. So compiling this module was taking too much time and required too much memory. So it, you know, it was not scaling very well. Second design was, okay, let's try to avoid the compilation. So we used to store the AST for the templates into our X table. The problem was for every request, we had to evaluate the AST, which is not fast. This, this function is not fast enough. Okay, so the design we had now, we have multiple mod uh, modules and also the X table. But the problem is we still have the same problem as the first design because we need to compile like almost 800 modules, which also requires time and memory. So the solution was let's build the modules, compile and load those modules, but not compile the templates when the application starts. It only has a placeholder not loaded for each render function. And then when a request comes in for that page, we just replace the placeholder with the actual X template for that page. And let's see how that works. So here I, I'm running, that's the staging website for Dockyard. And here we have this work page. As you can see, it's just displaying their find. And here I'm connected to that node, to that uh, node running the staging website. <clears throat> And here, if I call the page module and the render function for the page module for the work web page, you can see it's returned the render struct. So we, we have this struct here and it's playing the page just fine. So I'm going to call this function just to unload the page. Okay, so it's return not loaded now. So if you go back to the work page, I'm going to refresh the page and you should see the very same page and going back here, the page is loaded. So that's how we can load hundreds of pages and make it, you know, make it fast. So here you can see the render search. So you, you barely notice that the page is loading under the hood and during the request. Right, so I want to share uh, some numbers um, about the uh, how Beacon is performing. And the X table I was talking before, the router table, finding the last record. Remember, we have almost 800 pages. And find the last record on that table is taking about 20 microseconds, not milliseconds, it's microseconds. So we can have a router table at runtime, and it should be really fast. And the next numbers that I have to share here is uh, I have a website that has uh, the same the same page as the Docker homepage running on a shared CPU uh, at 20, uh, one gigabyte memory with a thousand users for five minutes. So that's the test I was doing for uh, for the to get these numbers. So basically I'm trying to break the server and see how Beacon and Live View performs. First, the memory utilization, that's really important because we are keeping everything in memory. So it's important to not leak memory, to not use too much memory. And as you can see, we can provide, we can serve requests for a thousand users for five minutes and you don't need too much memory to serve uh, a website. And the requests, uh, we got a we got more than two hundred thousand requests uh, after five minutes, and the CPU utilization was expected to max out because that's a shared CPU. It's a very small instance running on Fly.io. It was expected to max out, 
which of course degrades the performance of the request, uh, of the response, sorry. Uh, but the most important fact here is that none of, none of the requests failed. Even run this test several times, the request didn't fail. So given the proper resources, that is not much, you can serve pages with a very fast response time. And if for some reason your website receives too many requests, you can still serve in the pages. And another observation here is that Beacon was about 5% slower than a regular live application. So we can serve we can provide more features on top of live view, like the router table and other features, like serving files, serving um, uh, more features to, to your page, um, like meta tags, uh, like schema, and other features that live view does not have by default. And it is still as fast as, as live view applications. And here we have another metric, it's the page speed. Um, that's a Google application. It, that's the report for the Dockyard website, the actual production website. And as you can see on the bottom, we are getting almost perfect scores for mobile, mobile applications, for mobile devices, and perfect scores for desktop devices. And that's important because like I said before, for SEO purpose, your website has to be super fast. So the takeaway here is that Live View and Beacon as, as well, uh, no, they are good, a great fit for SEO uh, and for websites. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, I still have a couple more minutes. I wanna sh uh, I wanna show another project that we are uh, working. It's a Higgs template editor. It's a visual editor for Higgs templates. So here I have a local website running on my machine. And here we have the visual editor for this website. But before we make changes here, let's go to the live admin and let's change these page. So here we have the code editor. Let's change this high to say above. Right, so let's change and let's publish the changes and you can see the changes live on the website. And getting back to the page builder, you can see the changes here as well. So we can select the elements here and you can see it says it's a elixir expression. So we can say like, we can make changes here. Let's say hello, hello, Mita. So we just save the changes and getting back to the code editor, you can see the very same changes here. So we have two integration between the code editor and the page builder. So the page builder and the code editor, they understand Higgs complaints. And since the page builder is a visual interface, uh, we can have some nice features. So here we can see all the classes, the CSS classes, and we can change here. And we can say, say text. Um, example, we can change the attributes for elements here and Beacon supports tailwind by default. So you can use any tailwind class here. And back to the page, let's refresh these. Um, and you, then you can see the very same attribute here. So like I said, it's a two-way integration. And also you can add new elements to the page, right? regular elements like buttons and links. And also we have some high level elements as well to help you build your pages. So let's add a link component. And 
drag and drop this. So, there we go. All right, so here we have the actual Phoenix component. It's not just a regular HML element. It's actually a Phoenix component, as you can see here. And we have the attributes here as well, which of course we can, again, see here in the code editor. Okay. Um, Uh, we are still working on to solve some ad, ad cases before we can release the first stable version for for Beacon. Before we can, because we want to avoid breaking changes, uh, so we need to solve those ad cases before we can release the first version. So it should be soon, and we are also working to improve um, to make it more friendly to newcomers. And if you want to know more about Beacon, I recommend going to the Beacon CMS organization GitHub or the Beacon CMS channel on Elixir. We are always present there, so we can ask questions, ask for help. And we are also accepting Beacon work, integration and services around Beacon at Docker. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Do we have any questions from the audience? Look. Um, so, other than Dockyard, who's using this in production? For not just Dockyard, because we okay. are, yeah, we are recommending to not use it yet until we can release the first the first table version. But there are people just holding until we can say, hey, you can use it now. Oh, okay. Cool. 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 Thanks. Asking at home, well, at home, online, got questions. Um, anybody else that has curiosity those questions? Please. Is there a particular certain format to the screen? Can you drop it into your existing blog or do you have to? The, I'm sorry, I can't. So, could you drop this into your existing blog or do you have to generate your project book? Basically? Uh, you can you can use your existing Phoenix application. You integrate with, with your Phoenix application. Don't need a new Phoenix application. You can just use it. Because the idea is you can just keep using Elixir and your current stack. So if you have an umbrella application or a regular application, you can just use add the dependence and start using it. Uh, I, I have a question. So you're showing the original editor with HTML and then the, the new improved version. Um, I assume that there is a layout that surrounds the page that you're editing, right? And so, so and sorry if I didn't catch this during the talk. How, what is your workflow when you're developing the page, right? Like if you don't have the the, the drag and drop editor, or if you don't want to use it, like how, how do you, yeah. What, what is your workflow to like build the, the Docker website, right? Yeah, we are about to integrate the page builder inside live admin. So oh, okay. you make changes in the code editor and then you can see a live review of similar to what you were showing. Yes, we are in the process of making this integration now and it should be done in a couple of weeks. And then you can create layout, write HTML, and then see it. Like... Yeah, because some companies, they have different teams work on different parts of your website. Correct. So you can have designers creating components and then you can have content creators just using the components that right. another team built for you. And then you can just you know, create the pages using those components. The idea is to have components. Right. Uh, and so I can have components written in code, uh, and then I can just use them as live view component directly in my. Yeah. Okay. You can just use the page builder, for example, because if you create a new component, let's say a header, for example, yeah. that component you show up in the page builder. Yeah. And then you don't need Elixir knowledge. You can just yes, drag yes. and drop and create your page. Another weird curiosity, the, the drag and drop editor, right? it produces the HTML, well, e, e, H, e, e, X. Yeah. Uh, how do, do you actually make the editor work? Are you, are you kind of like constantly parsing the, 
the editor and then kind of like creating an AST for the HTML kind of, and then mapping it to components, like how? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I'm using the HTML formatter tokenizer, okay, which is actually a private API from LiveView, but Chris McCart was fine that we could use it. Okay. And he was like, okay, you guys can use it. So basically we get the Higgs and play, tokenize it into a list of nodes, and then generate a JSON. Yeah. yeah. And then we manipulate this AST and then convert it back to Higgs. So we have this uh, middle term yeah. AST. It, which is basically the tokenizer we use for the HTML for my right, right. Cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah, and super cool. Um, very excited to try it out. I'm wondering if there's an upper limit to the number of pages you can handle like that, uh, as far as the ad table is concerned. And also if there's any security vulnerabilities or concerns um, with using ad tables way. The single process that handles that table, right? Yeah. Uh, the limitation is your server, is the resources that you have on your server, basically. And about security, uh, that's a good question. We have another library called Safe Code that might be inspired. Because as you know, X templates are just a leaser. You could write like system command, delete everything. Like so we have um we have this library safe code that parse the AST of the template. And then his, this library is gonna say, hey, this code isn't safe, so you cannot have it. And then that's how we can have an extra layer of security on the template.